there is a trailer out to a show that I know that they're going to make me watch. I know that Daily Wire is going to force me to watch this. And that fills me with dread. It's really hard to look back on it now and go, what on earth happened? You hear that? That is the sound of hearts breaking all around the world. She's becoming a royal rock star. And then everything changed. There's a hierarchy of the family. You know, there's leaking, but there's also planting of stories. There was a war against Meghan to suit other people's agendas. It's about hatred. It's about race. It's a dirty game. The pain and suffering of women marrying into this institution, this feeding frenzy. I realized they're never going to protect you. I was terrified. I didn't want history to repeat itself. No one knows the full truth. We know the full truth. I love that it ends on that contradiction, just to show you how stupid this whole thing is. Because no one knows the full truth. We know the full truth. Well, you just said no one knows the full truth, man. You just, this is not giving me confidence. And there's actually some deception in that trailer too. There's a f- picture of the, the paparazzi taking photographs of of Meghan Markle, it would seem that's the implication. It's not. It was a photo taken long before Meghan Markle ever entered into the picture. It may have been a photo from a sporting event. Or so. It was, it was, so even just that shows you how deceptive this is. But no one's buying this at all, right? No one's buying that uh, nobody knows the trouble that Harry and Meghan have seen. And it's not as though Mer- Meghan Markle had, were just drawn into the royal family accidentally, you know, she met a guy at a bar, and then she finds out after she accepts his wedding proposal, oh my gosh, he's a prince? No! Oh, just my luck. I thought I met a nice accountant who would have a private life in the suburbs. And it turns out, my his name's Harry. I don't know if you know him, he's got red hair. Turns out he's a prince. Can you imagine? Ah, oh, just my luck. Meghan Markle, who obviously went to England to go prince shopping with the goal of marrying into this family. But why, why did she want to leave then? because all she wanted was the perks of the family. And she didn't realize that the family actually serves, that the point of the monarchy is not, is not what the libs and the communists would have you believe, which is just to drink champagne and enjoy all this luxury. The point of the monarchy is actually to suppress your personality, suppress your personal desires, and just serve the country. You are not, when you are the sovereign, you are not really permitted to be an individual. You were supposed to suppress all of that. That's what the crown does. That's what the vestments do. That's why, this is why priests put on vestments at church on Sunday. And this is, this is why the royalty do that as well. It's not to make themselves look like a rock star or something. Quite the opposite. It's to cover up their personality and, and to, to find themselves subsumed within the institution as the sovereign. They don't want to do that. This is another, it, it actually ties in with what we, we've been talking about, about privatization, right? It ties in with this idea that neither the left nor the right want to serve their country anymore. But what John F. Kennedy said when he said, ask not what your country could do for you, but what you can do for your country, that is now a meaningless statement to both the left and the right. Because the left looks at it, they say, I hate my country. My country is an evil, white supremacist, bigoted, terrible. It's the worst place in the world. I want to burn it down. And then the right says, what do I care about my country? My country is with that government. I hate the government, the common good. I don't know what the common good means. And I'm going to assert, no, I'm not. I'm going to go down to Wall Street and make a lot of money. Greed is good, baby. Let's boost up that GDP. Let's outsource some jobs. Let's open up the borders and let's just lower wages and let's have ruthless competition. Yeah, baby. And so it's, th- that's what you've gotten. You've gotten two sides of the same coin from both the left and the right, redounding uh, to, to damage to the country the entire time time. And it was a really dumb bet for the right to make because now all that privatization, we gave up all that power from our political order. And now it's being wielded by people who hate our guts. Not a good, it was a Faustian bargain, if you ask me. Do not be distracted by parties and presents this Christmas season. Instead, join Hallow's most anticipated prayer challenge of the year, Pray 25. Hallow is the number one Christian prayer app in the U.S., 
and the number one Catholic app in the world. Hallow features over 5,000 prayers and meditations, including the Rosary with Bishop Barron and Mark Wahlberg, the Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmitz, and Bible bedtime stories with Jonathan Rumi. Hallow helps make prayer a priority. This Christmas, with Pray 25, you can do the same for you. Led by cast members from The Chosen, the largest Christian streaming series in history, Pray 25 will guide you through meditation and prayer for 25 days leading up to Christmas. Pray 25 will help grow your understanding of mankind and develop a disciplined prayer habit during a season when discipline is put to the test. Find peace and fortify your faith this Christmas with Hallow. Download the app for free and join the Pray 25 Challenge. Go to hallow.com slash Michael Knowles. Get three months completely free. I absolutely adore this app. Hallow.com slash Michael Knowles to reclaim your peace during this Christmas season. Lawlessness is a huge problem here, okay? Look at at the Democrats. They don't feel they have to be accountable at all. Joe Biden was just asked what he is doing about the border. Here's Biden's answer. Visit the border because the more important thing going on, they're going to invest billions of dollars in a new enterprise. Yeah, we got bigger problems. This is a major problem, according to public opinion polls. If you look at public opinion polls right now, the, the issue of immigration is important to everybody, not just Republicans, Democrats too. The majority of Americans want to drastically reduce all immigration to the United States. But Mr. President, you're flooding the country with 2 million illegals every single year. Yeah, we got bigger problems, whatever, moving on. What are you going to do to me? What are you going to do to me? When you're seeing this lawlessness trickle down everywhere. Look right now in, in North Philly, there's a gas station owner who has just hired private security to ensure that his customers can fill up their tanks. And when I say private security, by the way, I'm not talking about a mall cop with a billy club. I'm talking about guys who are clad out in black with very impressive black rifles, masks covering their face, hoodies up, armor on, because in a major American city, the city where we had the Continental Congress, okay, this is the city with the Liberty Bell, people cannot fill up their gas tanks without fear of being shot. This is a breakdown of the political order. And you're going to see more of it. You're going to see more and more. I hate to give the libertarians any credit here, but increasingly you are going to see more and more the wealthy hiring their own security. What did you think was going to happen? The Democrats call for defunding the police and abolishing the police for two years. Well, they did that in many places. And then what happens? You need cops, you you need security. And so people are going to start hiring it themselves. And this is the acceleration of a trend that has been really tough in the United States. And it's not only the left's fault. Uh, the, the, The right has actually played a role in this. For the last half century, you have seen the privatization of our country. (laughs) <laughs> and I know the Republicans for m- many years at least talked about how great privatization is. We need to privatize everything. The government's always bad. Well, at a certain point then, you end up in a situation where the people who control your political order are basically completely unaccountable. You privatize the public square. Okay, now Facebook, Google, and Twitter control the public square, which means they control the American political order. And until Elon Musk bought it, they all hated us and they could rig elections. If you... you if you privatize your whole country away, you're, you're, yes, you've reduced the risk of big government sometimes, but n- now you're just beholden to corporations. And if my rights and way of life are being taken away by some awful corporation that hates me, I don't feel any better than if the government were taking my rights and my way of life away. Democrats privatized the social sector. Republicans privatized the economy. And now we've got private police forces. That's the best we can do because we don't even have a police force anymore. Not good at all. And and you've got Joe Biden saying, oh yeah, our borders, that's not important. Now, you know, it's Woke Wednesday. We have a a great presentation today to educate all of us to open up our minds from love, don't judge. Okay. I'm I'm going to, I want you to have your consciousness elevated with me. We're going to reserve our judgment. We're going to see how long we can reserve our judgment. While watching this, the rest of the show continues. Now, if you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.